Good morning, everybody. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning's session. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is a school, and it is not a church. And neither are we affiliated with a church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of the eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity and to this present day. Now, this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kennedy in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And we established schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established in February 2021. Now, in these schools, we use and teach by the true and original names and titles for the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ, Lord, and God. They are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. But Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit. And this state is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in this pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. And this shape and form can only be seen in the divine vision and understood in the divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. Now, after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses 
on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of the most holy place, a holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth to this school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of the threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten aims of school are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as it really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan, and his demons operating a mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the cognitive salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watcher is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning we have a prayer by Dr. Nanette Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is Acts the first chapter. Our scripture is Dr. Irene Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. Do you do the prayer? Yeah. Okay, I read Dr. Irene Rose is going to do the prayer. Good day, class. We like to ask Yahweh our Elohim to give us that wisdom and knowledge, stability and strength so we could go on. We need this now than ever more. And we ask this in your son's name. Yahshua, who is our Messiah, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Good morning, class. My name is Annette Ramirez, and I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trina. I'll be reading Acts, the first chapter. The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Yahshua began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he cho had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh, and being assembled together commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly immersed with water, but ye shall be immersed with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Rabbi, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olive, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where a Bode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphi and Simon the Zealot and Judah the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, which the women and Miriam, the mother of Yahshua, and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about a hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by mouth of David spake before concerning Judah, which was guide to them that took Joshua, For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and filling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto the dwellers at Jerusalem, inasmuch as that field is called in their own tongue, al, al kadama that is to say, the field of blood, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his office let another take. Wherefore of these men, which have companied with us all the time that the Savior, Yahshua, went in and out among us, being from the immersion of John unto that same day, that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, 
Joseph called Barsaba, who was surnamed the Just, and Matthiah, and they prayed and said, Thou Yahweh, which knowest the hearts of all men, show which of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judah by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthiah, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. I have read Acts the first chapter. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 All righty, thank you. Uh, before we get started, I want to send a heartfelt uh, uh, condolences to Penny Warren, okay, and uh, I just want to say a couple of things. Lee was one of the first people that I met in this teaching. Peter Cadeau and our family here, my daughter, my son, we all started a, a school. We first were having uh, uh, college meetings, and we'd meet at uh, Peter's uh, location, and mine would take turns. And as we grew, we'd go to other people's houses and have a uh, class. One day, uh, Lee, I guess he was moving down, this is 1982, around there. He was coming down to L.A., so Peter invited him over to uh, attend a class and to give testimony about uh, some experiences he had. Before that, Peter explained to me about all these miracles that were happening in, the, in, the, in the, this teaching, okay? And I was amazed, you know, hearing the predictions and the, the things that Dr. Kennedy uh, prophesied according to the pattern, okay? And uh, he brought up uh, other things. Uh, Will had uh, interviewed uh, this guy that got... Uh, got hurt in his motorcycle, well, he actually died, okay, and Dr. Kelly went to the hospital, okay, and raised him from the dead, okay. Now, this is my opportunity to go and listen to uh, Dr. Lee Warren explain this, this, his testimony, how he survived a plane crash, okay, and that blew me away. Now, if you watch this interview that Will gave uh, 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 Dr. Lee Warren, he explains it in there. But I heard this back in 1982, you know, and it brought back a lot of memories, okay? Because I was sitting there, and here's a guy, what is it, he said it was about 1,500 feet up in the air, you know, this, he was in a, a Cessna, and this other uh, plane that came out of the clouds was a Piper, okay? And it clipped, it clipped the back wings of his airplane, okay? He was a student waiting to get his license. And the airplane went in a spiral. The other, uh, the people in the, in the Piper perished. Peter, I mean Peter, uh, Lee, Lee Warren, his instructor, walked away from it. Now that blew me away. And then other things that he explained that went on in his experience, you know. And um, after I, I, I watched this uh, interview, I was paying real close attention, listening to everything, okay. Now, and those that haven't watched it, watch it. If you've been in this teaching for a while, okay, some of the things that you learned from the, the, the speakers that uh, been around the founder and all this that, that explain this, this teaching by the pattern the way it's supposed to, when you listen to this, this interview and listen to the things that Dr. Lee Warren was saying and the questions, it really hits home, okay? Because you have to believe that this, once you're in here, and you hear you're exposed to the true name, basically the truth and period. It's not like when you went to church, okay, and you hear all these fables and all this stuff. It's proven, 
by the scriptures, easily, and by this divine pattern, okay, and the migratory trip. And for people, I've heard people have dreams before, okay. I had a few myself. I can't explain them. But if you listen to this tape and the things that he done, he did a lot of research, okay. Lots of research. Will could attest to that because he was in the class there and they were doing his stuff. And it shows, okay. When he speaks, he's confident of what he's saying, okay. And uh, I listened to this thing all the way through. And it took an effect on me. Okay, it uh, kind of a, a surreal effect. Okay, I had to get up, I went outside, watered the grass. I mean, it, it affected me so much, it, it, it was affecting my breathing, you know. I felt uh, drawn, I mean, just. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but just a little while ago it, it just went away, you know. But uh, I was like, man, look at how a heart attack or what, you know. But that's the effect it had on me, you know, both mentally, spiritually, and physically. You know, just by the things that I heard, and I know they're true, because we did we did our own research. That's what this class is all about. And if he, when he explained this thing, it's not just blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. You got to dive into it, okay? Those are our basics. And when you apply those things, Yahweh gives you a better understanding, a deeper understanding of his purpose, pattern, plan. And when I heard that, I mean, it just, man, I, I kind of melted and uh, uh, I was just amazed. You know, and uh, uh, like I said, I walked around after that until just a little while ago, it, it finally lifted for me, you know. And uh, I said, man, I got to get up and say something, you know. And I appreciate it. I appreciate Yahweh for introducing him to us, you know. The other one that was uh, first uh, uh, met was also Rip Macklin, okay. Uh, various others because during the time before we had a class, he was inviting, inviting uh, a lot of people from the headquarters class, you know, the, from the president all the way up to the dean, you know. And uh, I got to hear them all, what they have to say, and all through the years, you know, I'm not no speaker and all this, but I understand the things that Yahweh allows me to understand. And it stores up. And when it's time, he reveals things to me. You know, you know, as older as I get, <laughs> you know, I, 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 um, I, I um, find it difficult to find words to explain it, okay? But if I sit there and take my time, I can explain it. But anyway, Yahweh raised up certain people for that, okay? We just have to be coming to school and know that this thing is the truth and this thing is going to end, okay? It is going to end. This physical creation, you know, just by listening to certain people that had, Yahweh gave them a, a good understanding and blessed them with the knowledge, okay, listen to them, check these things out, okay, it's for your benefit. Okay, that's all I have to say, uh, um, our first speaker will be Dr. Will Williams, um, Say producer. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is producer. Director. Director. Okay. I just want to give you That's my phone? Yeah. See? I'm You good? I think so. Okay, I'll do it. Yahweh, our Elohim, who is the resurrected Yahshua the Messiah.
so I am. Um, boy, I didn't expect you to go through that. <laughs> because I had something else I was going to do, but since we brought up Dr. Lee Warren, I suppose I can give a Hello, oh, good. Mm -hmm. I suppose I can give a little bit of testimony mm -hmm. on that. And, um, and uh, I intend to go to this funeral this Friday. So. But the more I thought about it, um, well, I, I do a lot from, from Dr. Lee Warren. I was in his class at one time. In fact, um, I've been a member of eight classes. Uh, I started off in St. Louis, then I made it to Southside Chicago. You want to come by? Excuse yeah, come on by. Excuse me. Just duck on your head. A little bit beat you down. Yeah. Uh, from St. Louis, and then I made it to Southside Chicago, grade 6 19. Then I made it to downtown Chicago, which was Lee Warren's class. In fact, I used to be the president of that class at one time. Then I made it to Pomona, and then I made it to Fort Worth, Texas. Then I made it to Dallas, Texas. And then we started a class, me and another guy, and that was in Arlington, Texas, which was a satellite of Dallas that he was the representative. Then I left Texas and came back to California and became part of the Ontario class. In fact, I've been in Ontario class longer than all the other classes put together. <laughs> but despite my journeys and all, and I think I even told you one time I was out of class for like six, six years or something. You know, That's not the only time. There was another time I was out of class for two years. So, But Yahweh pulls me back in, no matter how much I try to get away from it. Right. Okay. And despite all of that, I would say in the eighth class that I was in in Ontario, I look back and I I learned from all the classes I've ever been in, you know, even the classes, you know, I learned from something from something, you know, somebody did or something. But I would say Lee Warren's class was Probably that I learned a lot from and or that I drew most from because he really treated his class like a school, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. In fact, to, to this day, to this day, Lee Warren is the only dean in IDMR or any other class that ever wrote a syllabus for his class. No other dean to this day has ever done that. They talk about, we school and not a trip. Where's your syllabus? <laughs> <laughs> and see, these are things that I learned from Lee because he, he was very systematic about the way he did research, not only him, but Peter Godot. And I suppose that the, the more I think about it, I suppose this organization, which is Archetype Pattern Workshop, which we, you know, which technically I'm the founder of, you know, a 501 3C nonprofit organization. I suppose I drew the idea from Lee Warren because he made his own nonprofit organization right. with Plim, you know. And it was through Lee Warren that he really emphasized the textbook because the man read the textbook and, mm -hmm. and, and really taught from it. And he taught about the pattern and, and the steps of the pattern and the things that I do. So I was going through the steps of the pattern and comparing it with the market. I learned that in downtown Chicago class under Lee Warren. The 490 cycles and things like that. I learned that in St. Louis when I first came into class. You know, the guy who taught was Dr. Bill Farley in St. Louis. And he did teach the 490 cycles in the post diluvian age. That he knew. And I knew that. Okay. But when I got to downtown Chicago with Lee Warren, through it through his through his instruction, I was able to perfect that. You know, going back into the ante as well as the person. See? So, and, and the way he did things, he, this is what Lee Warren would do. Like on a Saturday, Lee did this once. He, uh, he scheduled an autopsy. He scheduled an autopsy, and uh, so, uh, you know, the class could go and see the, the human body, you know, being cut open and all the parts and all like that. And then on Sunday, give a class, on, you know, give a class about the, about the body, stuff like that. Uh, there's a, there was this one museum I used to love to go to. I'm trying to think of the proper name for it, the Chicago. It was the, of antiquities. It was this museum that had antiquities. You had to pay to go in and all. But because we were a nonprofit organization, we got 
the tour for free, and they threw in a, a tour guide for free, and they had all these antiquities, like mummies, I mean, actual mummies from Egypt, antiquities from uh, from Babylon and from Persia, you know, as well. And, and, and then the next day, come to class and give a lecture on the Daniel chart. See, that was the kind of things that we warned in, you know. See, he really treated it like a school. You know, and even the controversies, the stuff that I got involved in, I learned it from Lee Warren, like the copyrights and the trademarks and stuff. Lee Warren bumped heads with the Board of Trustees decades ago about the trademarks and stuff like that. You know, and so I, I learned by instruction and I learned by example, you know, the things that he did when I was living there in Chicago. And, uh, and, and I took the heart and I, and I duplicated them even, you know, like the way I met Lee Warren. I met him in, uh, at the time I was in Chicago. I had just moved to Chicago, as a matter of fact. And I was going to the South Side class, which was at 86, 19, South Ashland. And, and one day, he just came in on a Sunday, and you know, they called him up to the floor. I didn't know who he was, and it, it just gave him just a great you know, lecture. I was like, I was like, who is this guy? You know, where they been hiding this guy at? You know? And then he, he announced that he was going to do some sort of series of lectures. And he had a paper that he nailed onto the bulletin board in the vestibule. And it, and it was a, what he called a fall and winter series of lectures. You know, in other words, from the first day of fall all the way through winter, he had each Sunday of a different lecture, of a different topic. And he invited people and said, well, if you want to do a topic, just let me know and you can do it. You know, and I'll let you do one of these topics if you want to. So I, you know, and so after he left, I looked through the paper, you know, and I saw a topic that I thought I could do, which was astronomy and astrology. I, I knew something about astronomy because I had just taken a class in astronomy just the, a year before, before I came to Chicago. So, so uh, I called him up, and this is what I called him, and this I met him the first time. You know, I called him on the phone. And, and I, you know, I told him who I was, you know, and I wanted to do what, you know, one of his subjects, you know, the, the astronomy, astrology. And at the time, he was meeting at the Lawson Lime City, which was downtown Chicago, well, the near north side, put it like that. And so, he, like I said, he didn't know me from, from Adam, you know, I just talked to him. And he said, yeah, okay, well, you know, you can do that now. But uh, and then he just got to warn me. He said, now, look, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> Be prepared now, all right, you know, uh, don't come in half-stepping, okay, you know, <laughs> he was like, I said, don't worry, I'll, I'll be ready, you know, and so what I did, I went to the Adler Planetarium, and I got a couple of props, I got a big sheet, big uh, poster that had all the planets on there, a couple of prisms, and uh, it went over the, the, the pamphlet, the universe pamphlet, okay, and then uh, I went down there, I went down there, and uh, it was my first time going down there, and I went down there to give the lecture, and, and I gave the lecture, and he didn't, like I guess he had never met me before, never, he didn't know anything about me, he didn't, you know. So I gave the lecture, and he's sitting in the chair, and like, you know, and he's enjoying it, I guess I'm doing a decent job. He's like, yeah, I said, that's right, that's right, go ahead, go ahead, you know, he's sitting there, and I'm just going through this, and just, you know, pretty much what's in the universe pamphlet, you know, and, and other correlations and stuff. And so afterwards, you know, we got to talk, and you know, and I, and I really, you know, appreciated what he was doing. And I remember coming down there one time, and this inspired me to do the same thing. Otherwise, I would have never had seen an example. When he was doing downtown Chicago, Lee Warren did everything except the music. He didn't sing, but he would do. He would do the moderation. He would do the prayer. He would read the scripture. He would do the lecture. He would do the announcements. And then he would do the doxology <laughs> all by himself. See, so I had that in mind so that when, when it came time to like our situation a couple of times where I had to be by myself, I had a vote by the look. I said, well, we want to do it by himself. I could do this, but you know, like when I live stream from home. Mm -hmm. I said, well, if he could do it by himself, I could do this by myself. So, you know, that kind of thing. So he's, uh, he was a legendary guy. And, and really, all of you people in IDMR should thank him. You should thank him for this particular thing that he did for, for everybody. He was the one that opened the door so that people in IDMR, the general students, could have access right. to audio tapes and transcripts. Because I can tell you, and I've been around long enough, there was a time when those things were not available. Mm -hmm. Unless you knew somebody. 
You know, you were in good with somebody. You know, they might share with you, hey, you know, and wasn't share with nobody. It was not not everybody else. It was Lee Warren that opened the door to that. And I can tell you how that happened. One day, uh, one of our members invited a bunch of us over for dinner. Her name was Mildred Huey. Wonderful cook. And we had dinner over there at her place. And then after dinner, I sat, I was sitting on the couch. And she came over to me and sat down and she gave me a cassette tape of the Dr. Kinley lecture. You know, because she would go to, in the wintertime, she would go to California, you know, because she was elderly and she, for her health, she didn't like the cold, so she would go to California and, and attend LA class. And she knew people out there, so she was able to get a tape, you know, to stuff like that. So she gave me this cassette tape. It was December 3rd, 1975. Very clear tape, too. So I played it and it just blew my mind because it was the first time I ever hear, heard Dr. Kennedy give a lecture. Mind you, I met him in 1975 at the, um, the convention. At that time, I didn't meet him, but I had never heard him give a lecture. This was in 1981, I believe, when she gave me this tape. So I listened to it and I was just completely blown away by, by, by the contents, you know. And everything, and really, it marked the way that I, be, you know, began to speak, as far as because he said something on there that always stuck with me. He said, "See yourself. See, see yourself as Yahweh made you to be in His image and likeness. See yourself, okay? You know, and in seeing yourself, you can be yourself. You can be that the way Yahweh made you to be. You see, because a lot of times." People would get up and lecture, and they would lecture, and they would sound, and I did the same thing. You know, sound like somebody else, who sounded like somebody else, who sounded like Dr. Kindling. Because people would imitate that, especially, I, I remember my dean, the first dean, Dr. Bill Farley. The man was good. He could imitate Dr. Kindling. He put the cane, you know, with the pointer like a cane, because Dr. Kindling would do certain things, and, and this cadence and the voice, you know, that kind of, and people imitated that instead of just being yourself. See, and that was the thing that I learned just by listening to the tape. You know, just see yourself and be yourself. Just be that what Yahweh made you to be. Right. See, according to his purpose. All right. So I took the tape and I gave it to another guy. You know, to, to let him listen because he had a nice fancy Lorenz system and all that. Uh, it was it Lamar Johnson? Huh. And he listened to it. And then he gave it to Lee Warren. And then Lee Warren was doing it. He was inspired to want to get some more tapes. In fact, what he did was he bought uh, a, a speed dubbing machine, an audio speed dubbing machine that could audio, you know, do a two-hour cassette tape, and two minutes dubbing it and stuff. And, and he had a plan of going to California to stay out there for a few months, and he did for like six, seven months. And he was, you know, Dr. Gross was still alive, Josephine Gross, a lot of these old-timers were still alive, and many of them had audio tapes. Uh, and so what he did was he got like maybe about a hundred hours worth of Kinley tapes, you know, and he said, I remember him telling me that Dr. Gross had boxes of tapes in his attics just collecting dust. So, so he did that, and he made uh, copies for us in the class, and we in the class passed out copies to other people in other classes, and that's how the thing got started. There were some people that were even against it then. You know, oh, no, no, don't, don't do that, you know, the, 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 the world's not supposed to hear this, you know, all this stuff. You know, people, there were actually people that were against it, you know, and I'm like, why? You know, because, see, they were advertised as free public lectures, right? and these are just recordings of free public lectures, so why shouldn't anybody else listen to it? Why hear it? And then the idea came, I think, with the Rothsteins. They had the idea of doing transcriptions, mm -hmm. and they had, to, you know, they got Lee Warren's First, you know, he was the first one that ordered that actually organized a set of audio tapes. He was the first one to do that and, and make it available to whoever wanted it. Okay, so that kind of opened the door to all the other stuff. That and so now we have tapes and transcripts. We don't even think about it. But like I said, there was a time when right. these things were not even available. And see, and you couldn't check certain folks because some people would say certain things, and so, and then the tapes or the transcripts would be all like, "Well, Dr. Kelly said this," uh -huh. you know, and that's not what you, you're not saying the same thing he's saying, you know, that kind of thing. People, then, like I said, some people didn't like that. Okay, but that was some of the things that I learned and that I pass on, you know, to wherever I've gone to, even to now. Now that I think about, it, especially after hearing what Iggy said, I mean, gosh, I guess this is. 
this is really the succession between what Lee Warren did and what Peter Godot did, you know. Because all out here I am, I'm representing Lee, and, and you guys are Peter Godot, and it's like, wow. <laughs> I'm <laughs> but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of it. I think that what they did, the way they, they brought the gospel across, you know, they did it in a way that anybody could understand it. Whether right. you were academically trained or whether you was just low, you know, on the low end of the education scale. Wow, okay, I think I'm almost done with that testimony, but since you brought it up, because it, it made me think of a lot of things, and I, and I truly appreciate uh, Dr. Lee Warren for the things, for his instructions and, uh, and his example, you know, particularly in history. I always liked history, but when I met him, I, I thought I'd never met somebody who knew more about history than, than I did, you know. But, I mean, in class, Lee Warren did the book. He wrote, well, no, oh yeah, he wrote the Third World War book. I'm going to mention that, right. you know, and uh, and it's really based off the fourth volume of the textbook. And a lot of people still don't understand the fourth volume mm -hmm. of the textbook, which means they don't understand this Daniel chart, right? Because they don't understand history. And that was the thing that Lee Warren used to do. You know, we was, I mean, he was pretty skilled in a lot of subjects, history, economics, all. He was skilled in all of that. And we went through history. In fact, he used to have a 16 millimeter film projector. And uh, in Chicago, they have an audio-visual center at the library. Where with just a library card, you can check out 120 minutes worth of films, whatever films they got, whether it be fiction or non-fiction, you know? I mean, they would have old movies there, or they'd have documentaries and stuff. And, um, and we used to get historical films on Friday nights and, be a, and have a workshop on Friday nights, and we would show a film on something, you know? And then we would just get into it, and then can carry it over on Sunday. I mean, that was the kind of stuff we did. And I remember on one of his jobs to California, I asked Lee Warren if I could borrow his film projector. It was a 16 millimeter projector, borrow it, and he let me use it. At the time, I was living with John and Myra Quates. And you can ask them, for the two years that we had that projector, we watched everything in that library. You know, I mean, we had a book, we had a, we had a catalog book of what they had. And, you know, every time we watched something, we just put a line there. There was so many marks in that book. And, man, we watched everything, you know, fiction and nonfiction. Because I would get stuff on science, mathematics, geology, geography, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I used to joke and say, you know, and they would ask me, you know, because I, you know, even in the snow and the rain, I'd go down to the library and go get some films and carry it back home. And, you know, John Crazy asked me, he said, are we going anywhere this weekend? I said, yeah. I said, we're going to Romania. I had a film on Romania. I said, we're going to Romania. I said, well, he's in Romania. I said, yeah. I said, you ever been there? He said, no. I said, me neither. That's why I got it. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so that, and, and boy, and that, that, so I, I appreciate it. I, I, I appreciate my time that I spent there in Chicago. It was only seven years, and, the, and, the, and part of that time was in downtown Chicago class and the things I learned that I carried with me, and I, and I still practice them to this day. Okay, I'll do a testimony. Let's get into some, some doctrine. Anybody got any questions or anything or topics or anybody, anybody want to get into? I've had people request me the last two or three weeks on a certain topic. You know, nobody's bothered me this week, so I guess I feel pretty good. What's going on with you, my dear? Um, <laughs> just something that came up. Um, the, can we go over the significance of the two witnesses? Um, like, just even going through the pattern, like the two angels, Michael and Gabriel. Oh, Mike. Like, what yeah, is the... Oh. Like, what is the significance of Yahweh having two witnesses? Two witnesses. Well, the scripture says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let the matter be established. Right. Uh, well, without witnesses, how can you prove how can you prove anything? All right. So here, okay. Here we have Michael. Okay, they're they're written. Okay, look, they're facing each other, but they're not looking at each other. In the mist between them is the cloud, so they're not facing or looking at each other, they are witnessing to what's going on in the cloud. Right. Okay. And see, and let's get uh, first, first John 5 and 7. And we'll start there. Yes, of course.
1 John 5 and 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. Now, these three are one. See, now, this, and look, <clears throat> let me say something at this point. See, because we used to, somebody said, and, and rightly so, King James Version, this scripture is not in the Holy Name Bible. Right. The reason why it's not in the Holy Name Bible is because the man who printed the Holy Name Bible, compiled it, A.B. Trainer, did not believe in the unity of the Spirit. See, he believes that Yahshua is, is Yahweh's little boy, basically. Okay, and that's why this scripture is not in there. And he used the excuse to say, well, in some manuscripts, ancient authorities, that scripture is not in there. So he used that plausibly as an excuse to omit it out of the Holy Name Bible. But see, and some people believe that, oh, well, this has got to be, but see, but Dr. Kinley uses this. See, his valid to Dr. Kinley. In fact, he made a plate right. out of this scripture. So that tells me the validity of this scripture. Okay? So there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Continue reading. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. Mm-hmm. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, mm -hmm. the spirit, and the water, mm -hmm. and the blood, mm -hmm. and these three agree in one. Now these three witnesses here in the earth agree in this one, in the one. Continue reading. Nine. If we receive the witness of men, mm -hmm. the witness of Yahweh is greater. Now if we see the witnesses of men, because... There are things that men do, and, and people say, I, I don't believe it. You know, somebody say, you know, oh, I caught a fish this big today. Okay, well, let's see it. Uh -huh. Oh, but he got on one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody was with you? No, I don't know. I said, no, I had my dog with me, you know. So, you know, but, but the witnesses of Yahweh are greater. Mm -hmm. These are divine witnesses that he established. Go ahead. If we receive witness of men, mm -hmm. the witness of Yahweh is greater. Mm -hmm. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his Son. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath witness in himself. Mm -hmm. He that believeth not Yahweh hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his Son. And this is the record that Yahweh had given to us eternal life mm -hmm. and this life is in his son he hath the he that hath the son hath life mm -hmm. and he that hath not the son of Yahweh hath not life right, good enough now these are the witnesses the spirit the water the blood and you have these witnesses and you mm -hmm. see you have blood running warm in your veins you have water you have a spirit, or the air, you say that air is a type of spirit, or the spirit that's animating you. So, you're, you got spirit, water, and blood right here. Your existence is a witness to his existence. Right. See? So how can you deny yourself? See? Oh, I don't believe in Yahweh. There's no such, there's no such thing as a God or a deity. No, no. How did you get here? How did you create yourself? You know? What did you do? See, that was the thing Yahweh asked Job, you know, and, you know, did you, uh, did you do this? <laughs> you know, did, did you do that? Well, what about this? You know, see, see, you didn't do anything. See, and that's the thing about the name, you know, because somebody would say, well, what difference does the name make? Well, if you don't know who you're talking to, do you really know that person? You know, I mean, <clears throat> it was, I mean, <laughs> just on GP, you know, his, I could just say, Yahweh Elohim created everything. You know, the moon, sun, moon, and stars, and everything in it, you know, set everything in motion. And he doesn't have enough sense to tell somebody what his name is. Mm -hmm. And here you are, you ain't did none of this stuff, but yet you can go out and tell somebody what your name is. In fact, if somebody calls you out of your name, you will be highly incensed about mm -hmm. it. See? Okay? But these witnesses here, let's get um, Isaiah 28, line upon line. 28, 9, and 10. I'm sorry? 28, 9, and 10. Thank you. See, these are the things that I learned from the basics of Lee Warren. 
you know, because he emphasized knowing the steps of the pattern right. and the migratory pattern. Why? Because it's in the textbook like that. <laughs> and I tell people all the time, if you would just go over the material that Dr. Kinley wrote and provided and go through it and engage these charts, you'd be surprised what you might learn. But see, but people would rather, no, never mind. Good. Okay, <laughs> don't don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead and read. Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. Mm-hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Them that are weaned from the milk and mm -hmm. drawn from the breast? Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Now, spirit, water, and blood are precepts or principles. Mm -hmm. See, see, what is a precept or a principle? Well, a precept or a principle is immutable. That means it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. A precept or a principle is uh, is irresistible, meaning that it's powerful. Nothing can stand in its way. My best analogy would be a giant steamroller versus a cockroach. Who do you think would win? Right? Hmm. And let's see, a precept is perpetual. It means it goes on and on. In other words, it is eternal. Right. See, now if whatever it is you believe in doesn't fulfill those parameters, then more than likely it's not a precept. Or principle. Okay? So precept upon precept upon precept. Go ahead and read. Ten. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Line upon line. See, that's why these charts are made in a certain way. This, this elementary chart, which was the first chart Dr. Kelly made, made this in a certain way. Here's the bloodline that goes all the way across. Right. Here's a water line that goes all the way across. Here's a spirit line, see, that goes all the way across. In the textbook, it even shows you there's a heaven line. Right. A heaven line that goes all the way across. Okay. All right, continue reading. Line upon line. See, line, line upon line. Go ahead. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. Here a little in the law. We've told you about this, the first five books. Right. Take it from the law, what Moses wrote. Very important. Because everything Moses wrote, all the prophets have to draw out of that law. The prophecy is drawn out of the law. Okay, so now here a little, go into the law, read. And there a little. And there a little, into the prophecy. Go ahead. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. See, Moses was a stammerer. That was established when he met Yahweh at the burning bush. And, you know, and, and, and Moses put it up as an excuse. And Yahweh said, well, your brother Aaron down here. You know, he speaks pretty well. You know, he will be your mouthpiece. You will be a law to him, and he will be a, a prophet unto you. So Moses and Aaron going down together, representing the law and the prophets to lay judgment upon Egypt. Right. Right. Continue. 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, mm -hmm. to whom he said, this is the rest mm -hmm. wherewith ye may cause to the weary to rest. Now, this is the rest. See, understanding this tabernacle pattern. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit. Why? It is Yahshua. Why? It is Elohim. Why? It is the arch. It's, well, this is the divine pattern that is representing the archetype or the original pattern of the universe. See? If this is a school, then what is the course of this school? Easily, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. That is the name of this course. Mm -hmm. See, go ahead. 12, to whom he said, this is the rest mm -hmm. wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Mm -hmm. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Now, people still don't want to hear. 
Because I hear it all the time. Hey, it don't matter how many correlation you make. You know, people don't want to hear this. And this is what Dr. Kennedy tried to get people to do. Right. To engage the charts. Engage the vision. Because in doing so, the vision will engage you. That's the whole point. See, this is your foundation, the spirit, water, and blood. And nobody here, at least not in this place, is dismissing mm -hmm. the foundation. You have to know that. You must understand that. Otherwise, you can't go anywhere else on these places. Right. And see, you've got to go through these seven steps. You have to understand the full range of the tabernacle pattern and the migratory pattern if you want to understand these plates and the rest of these charts properly. And, that's, and, it, and it involves reading. A lot of people don't, want, don't like to do that. Well, I'm just going to sit here, Holy Spirit, just... <laughs> And you know, and, and why did Dr. Kennedy set up a school in the first place? Mm -hmm. See, now he got it. He got it all at once. But for us, it's his body broken for you. Mm -hmm. Talking about Yahshua's body broken for you. And we get it piecemeal. See, so we're learning a little bit at a time, you know. Not getting it like the way he did. But at least he was gracious enough to start a school of research so that to disseminate this great information. Okay? And see, that's why I tell people, you know, if you really understood these charts, you don't, you don't have to come up with anything new. Right. If you would just delve into these charts, you'll find out new things that's in here that may not be apparent illustratively. But once you delve into this, then you'll say, oh, okay. Here's other things, you know. That's part of the purpose and plan that's on here, but how would you know unless you delve into it? You have to make these correlations. Quoting Dr. Kennedy, you must make these correlations, else you must remain a skeptic. And there's a lot of skeptics around, because they're not doing, because they, they're not engaging this. They're not following Dr. Kennedy's instructions. See? And that's what I learned from Lee Warren. He followed, he went through that textbook and followed his instructions. Get the textbook. Go to the fly leaf. Fly leaf. That's in the back. Yeah. See, that's it. You got it right there. No, turn it, turn the page. There you go. That, that last page. That's the fly leaf. And I want you to read the last paragraph there. This work, in short, sets up Elohim as the archetype pattern of the universe as he revealed himself to Moses and confirmed by the Apostle John's and Dr. Kinley's vision, and is further confirmed by the cosmographical uh, structure and operation of the universe. The Holy Scriptures, Law, and the Prophets the historical events and actions of mankind, and lastly, but not least, by the physical makeup and operation of man's own physical body and mind to the extent that nothing is excluded from its all-encompassing bounds. It proves that everything and every event of this universe is co-related and leaves no doubt that Yahweh exists and is the creator and the eternally abiding spirit that pervades and embodies the universe in its totality. Everyone who reads and understands this work will be taken captive against his own will. Now see, now, I didn't write that. It says, everyone who reads this and understands this work will be taken captive right. against his own will. Keep reading and will henceforth be unshakable and firmly rooted in a profound knowledge mm -hmm. of his eternal creator and will definitely live in glorification throughout eternity with others who hear his voice from heaven. Okay. <clears throat> now, and then people will say, oh, the textbook was written for the world, you know. Well, where do you live? <laughs> You know, yeah. that kind of thing. In fact, <laughs> back in the day, we were, we were into the textbook so much, people used to call us, uh, they, I guess, uh, 
to them it was a derogatory name, but they used to say about it, said, well, oh, those are those Lee Warriors, those are his textbook warriors. Hmm. And so it's these you know, textbook warriors, and I'm like, yeah, what's, what's wrong with the textbook? You know? And then people, you know, inflated, you know, and, oh, this guy here is, and even to the point that, well, who was it? Glenn Kenley, he wrote his own textbook, you know, that uh, he said, well, that's all method, so he wrote his own, you know. And my public, my, my personal opinion is, it's worse than the first, <laughs> okay? So, Dr. Kinley said this too also. He said, look, I've given you enough to save you. Hmm. So, he drew seven charts. This is what he said, I drew seven charts and wrote two books. And here, I've given you enough to save you. And really, when you begin to delve into these charts and stuff, you will realize he truly has. Because there's more to it that's on these charts. And see, people think it's just correlations or trying to be a correlation, you know, uh, expert or something. And it's not that. See, these are pieces to a puzzle. Once you begin to understand the pieces, you put the puzzle together. It's like, um, just like a real puzzle box. And Dr. Kendall used to go for these things. He liked puzzles. Just like on the puzzle box, you see on the, the cover of the box whatever the illustration is. All right, and then you pour out the pieces, and then you start, you know, putting it together and stuff. And then once you put it together, and you see the illustration, the illustration is greater in glory than what's on the box. The box is just there for a guideline, but the, the illustration in the puzzle is much greater than what's on the box. It's the same way here. The illustration here, or the vision in here, is much greater than what you see painted up here on the charts. The charts is just there, they're just here as a guide right. to help you, to assist you, see, in your research, you know, for spiritual awareness, if I could put it like that, okay? Now, since we talked about this pattern, all right, this pattern is seven steps, this migratory pattern is seven steps. The first step is the, it's the gate, the straight gate, which all must enter into compared to the door of the Israelites' houses. The second step is this altar of sin and sacrifice where blood was put on the four horns, a continual burning. See, and that's compared to the four points of blood here on the Israelites' house door, mm -hmm. uh, on the Israelites' doors, on their door, and then eating the Paschal lamb. The third step here is this brazen labor, which is compared to the Red Sea. The fourth step is this door which the cup of holy manure is at this door, which the high priest had to be anointed once to start his officialship. That's compared to the opening of the Red Sea, the mirac miraculous opening right. of the Red Sea. Okay. Then you have the fifth step. See, these articles here were brass, highly polished brass, whereas these articles were made of beaten gold. All right. This is the fifth step. Here you have the golden candlestick. All right, which was uh, well, the golden lampstand, I'll put it like that, where you had a middle prong and these others were sprung out from it because oil was poured into the middle prong and went out to all these three. And then you had the table of shoe bread, see which 12 loaves are on here, which was the daily sustenance for a high priest. Then you have the golden altar of incense, see, in which the high priest mixed incense, which was a sweet burning savor to Yahweh to mask the stench of burning flesh down here. That's compared to the wilderness of Sinai here, which is the holy place in the migratory track. See, they followed that phenomenal cloud, which was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, which is likened to the lampstand. They received manna from heaven, all right, which is like the table of shoe bread. Mm -hmm. And see, there was an angel in that cloud, who, you know, who was Joshua's son of Nun. Also, you can say that the Holy Spirit in Moses, see, was, was like the intercessor between Yahweh and man. That would be like the golden altar of incense. Then you have the sixth step, which is the second departmental veil of blue, purple, and scarlet. See, that separated the holy place from the most holy place. That is compared to the Jordan River here. That, that is divided between, from the holy uh, wilderness of Sinai and Canaan's land. This veil, the, the Jordan River divided for Israel and when they crossed over and went into Canaan's land. That is represented by the veil in the temple. See, that's rendered in twain at Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, okay? Then the seventh step is the whole, most holy place with the Ark of the Covenant here, a threefold uh, figure with two archangels on top of a mercy seat. This is where the clouds sat at 
between the, the two archangels, as we explained earlier. All right? And this is a seat of authority for Israel, because here you had the Ten Commandment law here, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that butted the almonds. That is compared to Solomon's temple here, see, which was here on Mount, Mount Moriah. It was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. And it looked like a man sitting on a throne, see, or like a seat of authority, see, as compared to the Ark of the Covenant. Now, that's just a basic correlation. You can elaborate as much as you like. But just understanding these basic correlations and the principles involved will enable you to go through these plates, see, see the principle through the manifestation. Why? Because the manifestation may change. Right. But the principle will always remain the same. Okay? So now, since uh, we had the scripture lesson, we read that. Let's, we got a plate right here that kind of deals with this. Okay? Now, here, this is just something basic and simple. Here's Yahshua here on the cross. All right? And see, let's, uh, he's on the cross, and that's a death. All right? and that would be like the death of the lamb here in Egypt. It would be like the death of the, of the uh, Passover here because he's fulfilling the Passover. Okay? He's got four points of blood, crown of thorn in his nails, hands, uh, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, and then punched in the side because that's the way the lamb was up here. It was punched in the side right. to drain the blood. No bones could be broken here. When the soldier was going to break his bones to hasten his death, he saw that he had already expired, punched him in the side, and out with came blood and water. Now he's buried in Joseph's new tomb here. See, he's buried in Joseph's new tomb, and then now here Michael is going to roll the stone away, and Yahshua is going to resurrect, okay? Now, let me see if I can, I can do this. I want to try to, let's see, how much time I got? An hour, I hope. Uh, the clock's not even set. <laughs> About 50 minutes. Okay. All right, I need uh, plate 31, 30, and 29. I'll, I'll, I'll use those three plates. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, I, I shall reset this clock because it's definitely throwing me off. Yeah, time and then the minutes and hour. So it's 11-11? Right, it was. Okay. Okay. Oh, I ain't got to do this. I got a big boy with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, what you got over here? Okay, Big uh, man. Uh, 37, <clears throat> 34. No, yeah. 29, 29, 30, and 31. 29 right here. 29 right here. All right, which is. All right, big boy, now I need you. If you uh, look at your clamp. Did you want 34? No, I want 29, 30, and 31. Yahshua ascending 
Right. All right. So let's, what we want to do is just try to show the pattern in this. And then I got these other plates up here to show the correlation. Because see, look, here's the idea. You have to learn how to correlate. Well, first things first. First learn how to correlate the tabernacle pattern with the migratory pattern. Mm -hmm. Once you get that together, what the correlations between these two, then you can take the same correlations and apply them to the other plates, which is what we're going to do over here. Okay? Now, um, <clears throat> Let's read, uh, let's get Yahshua's death. <clears throat> I think that's, I want a good explanation for this. I want ways pierced in the side. I think that's maybe Luke, the 23rd chapter. More, more detail. What you got? 22. No, 23, 23, 23. Luke 23 and 1. No, 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 no not 1. Um, With the, the soldiers piercing the side. Yeah, that's what I want. That's, that's what I want. I want the soldier piercing them in the side. Okay, that's not, that's not Luke, so it must be in Matthew. Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and expired. Mm -hmm. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Okay, now, let's explain that for a minute, because he said the, the next day was the preparation. Oh, well, it, it was a high day. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, see, it means that <clears throat> Yahshua's fulfilling, and he's, just as they had to offer the sacrifice on Abib the 14th, he's being offered up on Abib the 14th. See, which is Friday, but the next day is a Sabbath day, but it's a high day because the next day is the feast of of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. See? So here's Yahshua. This is the feast of the Passover. Then he's in the tomb on Saturday. That's the feast of unleavened bread. And then here's he resurrected the third day. See, that's the feast of first fruits. He's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Always keep that in mind. What Yahshua's doing. Everything Yahshua's doing is a fulfillment of the scriptures, i.e., the law and the prophets. But continue reading. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first. They broke the legs of the other two, see, because they hadn't expired yet, Breed. And of the other, which was crucified with him. Mm -hmm. But when they came to Yahshua and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. Mm -hmm. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. All right, so it pierced him in the side. Why? Because, see, let's just draw a line here. 
See, he's that sac that prepared sacrificial body. Same way here. See, that prepared sacrificial body going back to here. Um, that's why I was going to get something. That's all right. He's fulfilling the Passover. Okay? Four points of blood and then piercing the side just like the lamb was piercing the side. No bones was broken here. No bones could be broken. Right. With Yahshua. Okay? Continue reading. Yeah. And he that saw it bore record, mm -hmm. and his record is true, and he knoweth that what he saith is true, that ye might believe. For these things were done in fulfillment of the scripture, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Mm -hmm. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Yahshua, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Yahshua. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Yahshua. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Yahshua by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pounds weight. They then took they the body of Yahshua and wound it oh and wound it in linen cloths with the spices and the manner of the Jews is to bury. Okay. Uh, go ahead and read. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Joshua hastily in the new sepulcher, which was nigh at hand, because the Sabbath was drawing on. Okay, good enough. All right, so now here we got here. He's on the cross, and now he's in Joseph's new tomb. All right, that's a death and a burial, just like, Israel, when they went through the divided waters of the Red Sea, see they had they had the death in the of the of the Paschal Lamb in Egypt, right? And then they went through the divided waters of the Red Sea, and they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea unto Moses. Mm -hmm. Yahshua being in the tomb is fulfilling that. Okay, now let's go to Luke. I mean, not Luke. I want Mark. I want Mark sixteen and one. Mark 16 and 1. Mm -hmm. And when the Sabbath was passed, Miriam Magdalene and Miriam, the mother of James, and Salome, Salome. Salome, Salome. Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Okay, now we're in the holy place here, and they brought spices. Why are they bringing spices? What's in the holy place of the tabernacle? Right. See? Altar. Altar of incense. See? But just making some simple correlations using the scriptures. All right? And the principles of the pattern. Okay? Now, keep reading. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week. Now, very early in the morning, in the first day of the week. In other words, early in the morning, the sun is rising. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the light principle. See? That's the light principle there. Why? We're in the holy place. Look for the what's the light principle in the holy place? Seven branch candles. See, the, 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 the seven branch lampstand here. Okay. Keep reading. They came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Rising of the sun. That's the light. Okay. Now, uh, keep reading. Three. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Mm -hmm. For it was very great. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. And entering it into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, mm -hmm. and they were affrighted. And he said, saith unto them, Be not afraid, frightened, yet seek Yahshua of Nazareth, which was crucified. 
He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Okay, that's good enough. Now, we got the light and the intercessor. Now we want to get the principle of the bread. Let's get Luke 24. 24, let's start with 25. Now, he's on the road uh, to Emmaus, all right? And, he, you know, and he runs into a couple of guys, you know, and, you know, who are disciples, you know. I mean, not the disciples, but, but followers, you know. They, you know, they know what's going on, you know, but they didn't recognize who Yahshua was, you know. And they were like, well, you must be a stranger around these parts. And, you, know, you don't know what happened this past weekend, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Yahshua's going to, he's going to smooth them out here. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, mm -hmm. to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Mm -hmm. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it became to pass, it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it, and break and gave to them. Okay, what did he take? Bread. See, there's the bread principle. This is after his resurrection. That's, that's the bread principle there. See, all these things are here if you take the time to look at this. See, look. The Bible, anybody can read. In fact, the Bible is the world's bestseller for the last 500 years, ever since Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press. Right. But it also has another distinction. It is the least understood book on the planet. The thing that makes us Anybody else associated with the, with the doctrine espoused by Henry Clifford Kinley is that it's the pattern that is the key right. to unlocking what Yahweh has wrote in this Bible. Okay? And that's what you're doing. See, I read the Bible growing up in church. I grew up in church. I read, I read the Bible, read the whole Old Testament by the time I was 15. I read the whole Bible, didn't know anything about it, but I read it, I knew what was in there, but it didn't mean I understood what was in there, and I didn't. But I knew what was in there. You know, I knew about the story of Adam and Eve, and Enoch, and Noah, and Tower of Babel, and all that. I mean, I, mean, I learned this in Sunday school. They, they would teach us these stories in Sunday school. Growing up, about ne I knew about Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon in Sunday school as a kid. You know, I remember Mrs. Joyce Washington correcting me, because I kept saying baby love. Babylon, baby, like Babylon. <laughs> oh well, but that's what the pattern does. So you learn the pattern. So when you go back into the scriptures, you're looking at it through the eyes of the pattern. That's basically what you're doing. Okay. Um, where are we at? Keep reading, because there's another. I can bring something else out of this. Twenty-five and thirty, twenty-four and thirty-one. Mm -hmm. And immediately their eyes were opened. And they knew him, mm -hmm. and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us mm -hmm. while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, Yahshua is risen indeed and have appeared to Simon and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. Put your bread see. Go ahead. And as they thus spake, Yahshua himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. In other words he appeared there. He didn't come you know, open the door, he appeared just as he disappeared out of the sight. Now he appeared again. See, that that would be a type of the intercessor, appearing in the mist. Get it? Why? Come over here. This altar of incense is in the mist mm -hmm. of the holy place. Okay? 
So now here he is appearing. Uh, finish, finish that script. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Had seen a spirit. And so now, and, and really he wasn't. Because see, he, he, he rose up a quickening spirit. But see, but this is Yahweh Elohim. He can take on a physical body, right. and, you know, and, and eat, you know, because he goes on and said to him, he ate, he ate some fish. You know, and this is what Christians will say, oh, see, he resurrected physically. No, it's not that. No, he's not. He was made a life-giving or a quickening spirit. But he has the power to take on physical form mm -hmm. anytime he wants to. He did it back here. That's Joshua, son of Nun. Right. Back here. And believe me, Joshua, son of Nun, did everything every other human being did. He ate. You know, he had, he had to eat. He had to shave. You know, he had to wash himself. He had to take a bath. He had to go to the bathroom. It, it, everything you do, he had to do. Mm -hmm. See? And Joshua was in the likeness of sinful flesh. See, you know, <laughs> no, here after, this is after his resurrection here. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, but in the, after the resurrection, he's a quickening spirit. But right. here he's appearing to him, and then he goes, he, go ahead and read it, just to get it out the way. To continue? I'm going to continue. Yes, yes. And 38, and he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that is that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as as ye see me have. So now he's appearing to them, and he's appearing to them in a way that they can identify him. See, because he's resurrected from the grave, right? But he's resurrected a quickening spirit. But for this instance, for them, he's saying, "Look, you know, just to convince you, I'll appear as a way that you can know me. Mm -hmm. See, as flesh and blood. You know, it's me. But keep reading." And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Mm -hmm. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any food? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. Okay, see, see, it's no, that's no big deal. Because see, we showed you on another plate. That Yahshua, you know, how the angels, the righteous angels, when they go through veils, mm -hmm. see, they go through veils, they can come through this veil, which is a veil separating visibility and invisibility, and come into, and they can appear, you know, in the likeness of sinful flesh, you right. know, to the point of sitting down, having a meal with you, or whatever. Okay. But now, I'm, I'm just showing this part here, as far as Yahshua here, he's resurrecting, and this is going, going to the pattern. Now, I got. These are the plates here to make a correlation to this plate here and to make a special correlation here. All right? Now, of course, I've done different lectures before on these three plates. All right? This is plate 29, which is a fulfillment of Moses' first trip into the mount. This is plate 30, which is a fulfillment of Moses' second trip into the mount. And this plate we just were going through, this is plate 31, which is a fulfillment of Moses' third trip into the mount. Alright, now, here's the correlation I want to make. Alright, you got Yahshua here. He's resurrected from the grave. Quickening spirit. He's not resurrecting by himself. He's got these sons of Elohim here. They're resurrecting along with him. Mm -hmm. Now, to get that, let's get, I think it's Ezekiel. Let's get Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Thirty-seven and uh, a great army. I'll start with one. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel thirty-seven and one. The hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, mm -hmm. and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, there were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yahweh, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy un upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word, hear the word of Yahweh. 
Thus saith Yahweh unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the, what, the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say, the wind, say to the wind, thus saith Yah Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, that's that Ezekiel making that prophecy, and Yahshua fulfilling it here. Right. He says, now how did they come up? Now, that's why I have these other plates up here. If you would, if you would see, because I'm drawing a line here. Here's Yahshua. He's resurrecting, and he's at the head of this army. How did this army resurrect with Yahshua? All right? So, we're going to take this. We're going to draw a line. We're going to go over here. See, let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew, fourth chapter, four and one. Then was Yahshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the adversary. Mm -hmm. And after he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And then the tempter came, the tempter came to him, and said, If thou be the son of Yahweh, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. All right. Now he said, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. Now, that's what he told the adversary. Mm -hmm. Now, we could get into the, get persnickety if we wanted to about the stones, because I didn't know anything about it until I came in class. Those stones were set up as a landmark to mark the spot where the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan. Right. Okay. But the point I want to make here is that Yahshua said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of Yahweh. All right, now let's draw a line. Come over here. Here we are with Lazarus. See, and, Laz and Yahshua's in front of Lazarus' tomb. So let's get that. That's John, I believe it's the 11th chapter. Mm -hmm. um, start with 41. John 11 and 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Yahshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, by I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he said that, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Yahshua said unto them, Loose him and let him go. All right, good enough. Now, <clears throat> over here, Yahshua said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. Here is Yahshua, who is the word made flesh, right. are considered at the mouth of Yahweh. He said, Lazarus, come forth. In other words, he called Lazarus by name. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
See, he called him by name. Why? Because Elohim is the book of life. Maybe we should go back into the law and see that. Um, I'm thinking Exodus. Uh, you should my name out of the book. Yeah, well, that's what I want. Uh, Golden yeah, uh, 32 and uh, 31. Start there. Exodus 32 and 31. And Moses returned unto Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinneth a great sin and had made them. Uh, idols of gold 32 yet now if thou wilt for forgive their sin and if not blot me I pray thee out of thy book what thou hast written mm -hmm. and Yahweh said unto Moses whosoever hath sinned against me him will I blot out of my book okay now that means that Moses was written in the book of life and in this case here so was Lazarus uh, Otherwise, Yahshua would not have been able to say his name right. if he wasn't written in that book, which is himself. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, Lazarus, come forth. And, say, and that's the word of Elohim made flesh. Said, what, what did he say over here? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. Here's Yahweh in the flesh, and manifesting the flesh, saying, Lazarus, come forth. Okay? And he called him by name, cause his, cause, and he could because he was written in the book of life. All right, now, I, I, I did that, draw a line over here, because with Yahshua now, he's resurrected, the first, the firstborn of all, and see, and all these folks coming up, how did they come up? Yahshua had to call them by name. Mm -hmm. Get it? Mm -hmm. Co collectively and simultaneously, he called them all by name, because all of them were written in this book. Mm -hmm. Get it? See, I can see that now because draw a line because I can make comparisons here. And he has a, oh, he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of Yahweh. Oh, well, out of the mouth of Yahweh, Lazarus come forth. Out of the mouth of Yahweh, Adam, Noah, you know what I'm saying, Abraham, you know, so forth, so forth, come forth. You see that now? Mm -hmm. They had to call them all by name because they were written in this book. Right. You see that now? That's how you use correlations between the plates. Once you understand the basic primer, which is the tabernacle pattern, and the migratory pattern, then you can take those principles and apply them onto the plates to the point that you can compare one plate with another. And that's all we're doing. Oh, what he said here is valid here, which is also valid here. You see that now? See, that's what Dr. Kinley tried to show people. Once you get into the correlation of these plates, it will lead you to other things. Mm -hmm. And not so much that you trying to be a correlation expert, but to get an understanding. Right. That's the point. See? Now, we're going through this. Let's get facts one and two. Because we got the, we, you know, unless there's any questions, we, we showed the principle of the bread. The bread, the light, and the intercessor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we want to get the other principle here. Acts 1 and 2. Uh-huh. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. All right, forty days he tarried after his resurrection. Right. See, just like here, this was four days that he tarried before he resurrected Lazarus. Four zeros of place over. Right. So it, it, it stands for four thousand years, right? Which is technically speaking, forty centuries. 
you start to think about that. <laughs> so that's the forty principle up here. Over here, we read it, that Yahshua was in the wilderness of Judea for forty days. See, all these things are correlated. All right. Okay. So now we we got the forty days in. We got the light, the light, the bread, the intercessor. Let's go to um, let's see. Um, you're still in Acts. We're, we're the same. Just, just go down a couple of verses in, in that same chapter. Um, maybe around 8 or 7. Acts 1 and 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times. I'll go up about 6 since, okay. since he's answering, answering a question. At least let's find out what the question is. Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Rabbi, mm -hmm. wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, now, and, and listen, they're thinking about it physically, the kingdom to Israel. You know, the king, you know, and that's what and that's what people are looking for now over the building. They want the kingdom to go back to that's what Israel's waiting on. All right. And they and they will be, you know, because they haven't the Messiah hasn't come yet as far as they're concerned. And so when the Messiah do come, the Jews will be at the forefront of the intermediates between Yahweh and the rest of mankind. Hmm. Okay. Everybody, you know, everybody wants to be that, you know, the the intermediator, but there's only one. And that's Yahshua the Messiah who is within you. Okay, um, go ahead. Please. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, mm -hmm. but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is come mm -hmm. upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, now he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Why? See, look look here. This is in the most holy place. Right. Let's compare that to the high priest here on the Day of Atonement. He, he came up here. And he had to get coals from off the altar of incense and put it on the censer. Mm -hmm. So he's coming up on a cloud of smoke. He's coming up behind the veil. And see, and he's disappearing behind the veil. See, if anybody out here looking at it, they see him go behind the veil. See, on that cloud. See, and he's up here officiating. See, Yahshua is fulfilling that, the high priest. He's going up behind the veil, out of this sight, into the cloud. All right, keep reading. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Mm -hmm. This same Yahshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, mm -hmm. as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem, from the mount called Olive. Okay, good enough. Now, uh, now this is what the world, talking about uh, the Christian world, mm -hmm. this is what they're they looking for. See, they, they see because uh, because Yahshua, well, this is the this is the mount mount Ol the mount of olives or Mount Olivet, and so and he went up on a cloud. All right, and so the Christians expect, well, he's coming back because the, the scripture said he's coming back in like manner. So the Christians look at that and say, well, he went up on a cloud, and they and see and from their point of view, they they say it's in heaven. They, they they're thinking it's the atmospheric heaven that they're looking at, and, and that ain't the heaven they're looking at. Right. They look at the heaven they went into. It's the third heaven. See, that's what Yahshua went into the third heaven, which is eternity. See, this is space here. This is atmospheric heaven here, the third heaven. See, but Christianity thinks it's the atmospheric heaven, so that's why I say, "Well, Jesus is coming back," and they're looking up at the sky, thinking he's going to come down on a cloud, because they said, "Well, that's how he went up," not realizing this is a vision. Right. So now, if he left in a vision, then he would have to reappear in a vision. In a vision. Mm -hmm. It would have to be that way, because see, look. I know that there's a, you know, like LAX airport, it's like a good 50 miles from here. You don't see, you can't see a plane landing there. Nope. You know, it's too far away. Even though a 747 is a big plane, but you can't see it landing there from here, not where we're at here in San Dimas. 
Mm -hmm. Right? See, same way with, with Yahshua. If he was coming back, you know, and you know, anybody even in the daylight can't see him. And, and, and that's just on one part of the world. The other part of the world is at night. So what about them? So, no, it can't be like that. It can't be a physical thing. It has to be a divine vision. Right. Okay? That's what has to happen. It would have to be a vision. See, and look, and, he's, and it's between these two, two, two angels, that's just like the two up here. This is what we started off with, these two witnesses. Mm -hmm. You asked about well, these two witnesses. He's mm -hmm. got to be, you know, by these two witnesses. And that's the law, and, the, and they're also represented, you know, by the law and the prophets. Look, see this right here? All right, the two witnesses. Draw a line. Let's come over here. Here's miracles and transfiguration. Here's two witnesses here. Here's Moses here, and here's Elijah here. Right. Let's, 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 let's read something about these two witnesses. Um, I think what I want is in Luke. I want Luke 9. Um, start with 29. Because he took Peter, James, and John up here. Right. Well, we can start with 28. We'll start there. Luke 9 and 28. Luke 9 and 28. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. See, in other words, he transfigured. Mm -hmm. See, see, especially his, figure, especially his physical now he's transfiguring. Now, now he's in the spirit and corporeal. Go ahead. And his raiment was white and glistening, glistering. And behold, there talk with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah. Here's Moses. He's got the book of the law in his hand. Here's Moses. And here's Elijah over here. He's got the, uh, the writings of the prophets over here. Go ahead who appeared in the glory and spake of his decease, which he stood accomplished at Jerusalem. Okay, so now, he appeared, see, now here's Moses and Elijah appearing here. See, and then and they're having a conversation. See, they're eyewitnessing, talking about his decease that, that should occur at Jerusalem. In other words, they're witnessing, to, because see, in the law, it talks about that sacrifice, and in the prophecy, it talks about that. See? Okay? The law and the prophets. And he's witness, and they're witnessing to him. Okay? Go ahead. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. That's good enough. All right. I just wanted to get that out. All right. Just to show that once you begin the correlations, of the tabernacle pattern and the migratory pattern and you get become begun to become more proficient at it, then you can begin to compare plates, these different plates together. Okay? Alright? So that's that's what we're, that's the point I'm trying to get you to see that see people think that Correlations, you know, you do correlations to make you seem smart or clever. And, and that's not the point at all. That's not why Dr. Kinley did it. Right. That's not why he tried to impress that upon you. He was trying to engage, get you to engage this vision so that the vision would engage you. See? Okay? And see these, look. How much time? I got a few more minutes. Okay. Let's go back to, um, let me see, since we're correlating these plates. Let's go to Matthew, I think it's the 26th chapter. Yeah, 2636. All right, and I'm, and I'm right here on this plate here. And, and let me say something. There are some people that have this plate here. They, 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 they call it this plate ministry and baptism. That is incorrect. See, that's, that's incorrect. That's not his ministry. And, <clears throat> this is the ministry. Let me come over here. This is the baptism and ministry plate or ministry and baptism plate. Plate 29. This is ministry and baptism. That's the plate here. 
Okay? This plate over here is not ministry and baptism. This is called spiritual temple plate. If you don't think so, you can go to the fourth volume. Yeah, you know, and look at and then find and see for yourself. But now I'm going to use this plate to make a correlation with another plate on this chart. Okay, continue reading. Matthew 26, 36. Then cometh Yahshua with them to unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Okay, so now why is he saying that? Pass this cup for me. See, he's saying that. Let's just draw a line. Mm -hmm. Here. Because this is what Adam said. When he's up here, he's looking at this. He's looking at Eve. He, he don't see Lucifer. Lucifer is appearing to Eve. But he sees Eve looking at this tree. And so he knows what she's going to do. And she's like, oh, let this cup pass for me. But not my will, but thy will be done. Okay? All right? So that's, I'm just using this to correlate this with another plate. Keep reading. 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. not as I will, but thou wilt. Mm -hmm. And he cometh unto the, the disciples, and findeth them asleep, mm -hmm. and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? One hour. Why is he saying that? Mm -hmm. See, because one hour, prophetically speaking, is 40 years. Draw a line. He's fulfilling. How long was Adam and Eve up in the garden? One hour. 40 days, according to Moses' vision, which, prophetically speaking, you know, it would be about an hour, you know, 40 in principle. But to our line, see, but that's Yahshua. Yahshua is fulfilling that by saying that. Could you not wait with me one hour? He's fulfilling the man and, and the woman up in the garden, being up in there 40 days. Okay? Keep reading. 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. he, went, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drinketh it, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. Uh, 43. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Mm -hmm. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed unto the hands of the sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is the hand that doth betray me. Okay. So now, this happened three times. He checked on him three times. Why three times? Well, how many times did the high priest go up here on the, in the uh, most holy place on the day of atonement? Three times. It's three times, see. And see, you can, you can draw a line back here, and you can go back to Noah. We don't have the illustration up. Uh, wait a minute. <clears throat> we can. We can get this. Here we go. Wait, twenty. See, he was Noah. He let out the dove. How many times did he let the dove out? <clears throat> Three times. See, all these things are correlated. See. So that you can see 
beyond the manifestation and zero in on the principle. See, that's the whole idea behind this. See, so when people tell you our correlations don't mean nothing on earth, you just mark that person. See, in other words, it's like the situation with, uh, it's, it's the scripture where it talks about the Bereans. It says the, the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians because they were in their books. Whereas the Thessalonians, you know, they were, you know, I don't matter what you think, you know, you know, you know, snap, you know, chippy poppers, you know, it don't matter. You know, I know Yahshua, he's in my heart, and I mean his heart and all that, you know. Sound like nouveau Christians to me, you know. Yeah. You know, if you ain't talking about the pattern, then you, for me, you sound like a Christian. If you ain't talking about the pattern, because that's what Dr. Kelly talked about. That was the name of this course, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. So if you ain't talking about a pattern, then what really are you talking about? That's my question. See, here we're going to continue on preaching with Dr. Kennedy Todd. Right. You know, and you know, and people I know, people people have problems because you know this is a different organization. You know, oh, you left IDMR. I'm like, okay, yeah, so I left IDMR. I didn't leave Yahshua. Right. But to some people, they find that that's an equivalent. You know, because they look at, well, the Holy Spirit was in Dr. Kinley, and Dr. Kinley built by IDMR. So you leave an IDMR, is like you leaving the Holy Spirit. I've had people tell me that. You know, oh, no, the Holy Spirit, that's not, that IDMR is not the Holy Spirit. Well, then why are you worshiping it then? Right. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you something else, too, that you may not think. There are things that are happening now that will probably surprise you in the end, you know, that will happen to IDMR, the organization, and if you're still part of it, then you'll get caught in the backlash too, you know. But we'll stand by, you know, as an organization, and we want to help those, you know, if we, if we can. If we, you know, as an organization, I'll do what I can as an outreach. Like, if you need legitimacy, you know, as long as you're preaching the true gospel, you know. Right. You can talk to me about it, you, you preach the true gospel, you want to do an event or something, you know, and you, you can't get out anymore to do it, you know, if you can't do, do it yourself, but we'll, we'll do it. You know, we'll, you can use our name, I'll put it like that. I already got someone doing that already in West Virginia, it's our satellite class. He's, so if anybody, you know, come to us and say, well, whose authority you have? Like that, they can give me, they can give them my number, and you're like, hello, what do you want? <laughs> you know? Yeah, because we're a 501 c nonprofit organization, so we are legitimate. Well, barely <laughs> legitimate, <laughs> but we exist, okay? And by Yahweh, we hope to continue, you know, even if all of us disappear and the organization is still around, hopefully there'll be some left that will continue on. All right, um, we're out of time. All right, then thank you for your time and your patience. And I hope that what was said was edifying to you and that my humble request is simply take the time to engage the charts. Give it a try and see what happens. Yahweh, if you make a step, Yahweh will make two. This is why the school was set up. This is why Dr. Kennedy painted these charts, for you to learn. And if you are a, a, a true student, then you will engage these charts. You will do what you can to try to understand what's happening on these charts. And it is possible, but only if you want to be there. Only if you seek that, see. There are people now out there that want to despair at the school that I, I heard from this one guy. And you know, he wants to like deprogram, you know, people in I I got a letter, it's, the guy is silly. Because see, and obviously he's a disgruntled student who didn't, who didn't, you know, pay his, pay attention to his lessons. See, he listened to the voices without, as opposed to listening to the voice within, and that's why you're in bad shape, you know. All right, makes me wonder. Well, you know, if you want to be deprogrammed, what do you believe in now, Jesus? <laughs> you know? But it's the way of the world, and listen. It's going to happen, you know, there are going to be times when people are not going to like what we preach because we are so out of step with the world, all right? And that's okay, you know, Yahshua said, you know, Yahweh said the world will hate you, for my, just for my name's right. sake, let alone anything else, okay? Yeah, we're out of time, so I'll shut up. Okay, 
Thank you for tuning in. As a, again, we hope you were edified by the things that were said. As always, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he most truly is your only hope of glory. And with those few words, I love you again. Thank uh, everybody for tuning in, watching. We just an open invitation to those that want to come. You have something to say? We have the charts here. Come and bring your, uh, your whatever you want to talk about. And, uh, you know, ask questions. Bring your Bibles too. Okay, uh, now I'm going to ask that to give the doxology and dismiss the class. We'll be here next week, same time, same station. I'll stand to be dismissed. I'll be reciting the doxology from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.